Hi folks, well, jogging is one thing you can do while we're having the corona pandemic and another thing is to watch YouTube videos and I want to share one video of my friend Tom who's living in Panama some of you might know him from some of my travel videos and he's kind of connected to the United States he's living in Panama he has some friends in Hong Kong and he's actually very much connected to Europe because he's German um, and I think he's actually combining the news what you normally get just from your local news provider uh, with a wider view so a larger perspective and trying to give some more information about what's behind the corona pandemic thanks and um, yeah enjoy or however just think about it and um, write me in the comments what exactly you think about the words of Tom <laughs> It's going to be in two parts. The first one uh, is uh, going to answer the question uh, whether we should be listening to scientists and experts or whether we should just do our own thing uh, because this is no more than the seasonal flu, uh, which I hear floating about uh, a lot online. Um, the second part is going to be uh, slightly different because I'm going to offer a kind of a crazy hypothesis about what's going on here. And uh, I will also say it's, it's merely a hypothesis. It's not a conspiracy theory that I'm convinced about, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's let's go with that. You know, let's go down a rabbit hole for a little while. And uh, I'm going to start off with the uh, words of uh, renowned uh, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. And uh, he was recently on Stephen Colbert and asked about his point of view um, with regard to the coronavirus crisis, uh, noting that he is not an epidemiologist or you know specialist in that field. Uh, let's listen to what he said. I'm broadly scientifically literate, but what I will say of this virus, I think we're in the middle of a massive experiment worldwide. And that and where's is, the guinea pigs? Uh, uh, maybe the experiment is. Will people listen to scientists? Let's consider that for a second. We are engaged in a global experiment on how will the masses react to essentially shutting the world down. Now, the Chinese have done this about a month ago. And I don't think we are fully aware of how restrictive the Chinese were. I mean, in Wuhan, they essentially told everybody to stay inside their houses and they started distributing food. So they, they were essentially locked into their apartments and not allowed to go outside. In other areas, they shut down all factories in China. I don't think we are aware of that. But I've got a friend in Hong Kong uh, working for Adidas and he said that all of the factories in China shut down. So they were extremely restrictive and it seems they've gotten the um, coronavirus under control. Now, in the West, it's a little bit different. Uh, we're not used to an authoritarian party essentially shutting down the the entire country. Uh, but that's what's happening right now. And it's interesting how people react. Yeah? I mean, here in where I am in Panama, uh, when they first uh, started bringing in restrictions and, you know, suggesting social distancing, uh, people were getting in their cars, buying beer and going to the beach. Then they shut the beaches down. And when that didn't work, um, because people were still getting together uh, in drinking, they essentially stopped the sale of alcohol. And then we now have a curfew uh, starting at 9 p.m. going to 5 a.m. in the morning and people are not happy about it naturally I mean <laughs> Who likes the government telling them what to do and what not to do? I mean, you know in communist China uh, They can do that uh, because that's what they used to but we're in the West aren't 
I mean, and it is the same anywhere. I mean, people in, uh, in Florida uh, packing the beaches because it's spring break. Uh, in, in San Francisco, they, they go on rollerblading with their dogs. And in Munich, uh, people are heading up uh, the slopes to go skiing. Um, so we're all <laughs> reacting to this with our natural um, individualism of saying, well, I'm not going to listen to the government or experts <laughs> on this. I know better. I, you know, I read about it on Facebook. I'm a self-declared uh, specialist on contagious diseases now, and I know that this isn't really much worse than the flu. Well, I'm here to tell you that it isn't. I'm not going to bore you with uh, things like the R0 value uh, that denotes the uh, contagiousness of a disease uh, or tell you that the mortality is, is way higher, you know, 20 to 30 times higher than the seasonal flu, uh, or tell you that uh, people in my age group in their 40s are ending up in the ICU and left with permanent scarring on their lungs. It's, it is extremely serious. I mean, governments don't usually start shutting down everything because uh, they need the tax revenue. So for them to do this means they've got experts telling them that this is fucking serious. And so maybe we ought to be listening to them and following their advice. I, I, I completely understand that you don't want to. I mean, I feel the same way. I, you know, <laughs> I can't get alcohol anymore. I can't go go out uh, after nine anymore. I can't congregate with my friends. Um, you know, life is on hold, and we don't know for how long. Uh, so it's it's scary. But if we all get together and say, okay, you know, we we need to do this all as one people. Uh, it doesn't matter what age you are or whether you have a pre-existing condition or whether you, you know, believe in Jesus or positivity. Uh, it, 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 the virus doesn't care. The virus doesn't care where you're from, you know, where you live, what your beliefs are. It, it, it just moves from one person to another. Uh, that's all it wants to do. Um, so it'll be interesting how the experiment uh, goes. Uh, I really have no idea uh, <laughs> where we're going to be in a couple months from now. Um, and how this will play out, um, not just in terms of how many people will die and how many people will end up in the ICU, and how our system will cope uh, with all these people uh, having to go to the hospital. Um, it will really be a stress test um, for, um, for societies around the world, and uh, we'll see how, how they handle it. Um, you know, some of them seem to be doing pretty well. South Korea got it under control. Um, Italy and Spain are spinning out of control. France and Germany seem to have somewhat control over it. <sighs> the United States is going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I don't think it was very much uh, in the media. Uh, but um, it isn't just toilet paper rolls that are, people are going crazy for, but ammunition and guns. Uh, weapon stores in the United States, but also in Canada, are selling out. <laughs> so people are stacking their guns. Uh, so that'll be an interesting uh, uh, part of the experiment. Uh, this is a powder keg that's going to go off. Um, New Orleans uh, kind of showed that it could go really, really south. Uh, so yeah, we live in interesting times now. Yeah, so what did you think about part one? Um, just write it in the comments. And here we go with part two. Now, I would like to go back to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson was on a show and he was asked about um, the belief that we're living in a simulation. Um, lots of people, including Elon Musk, are of the opinion that we are, in fact, living in a simulation. Now let's listen again to Neil deGrasse Tyson, what he has to say about that. Elon Musk says that we're living in a simulation. Uh, He's not the only person that theorizes this. Basically, we're in a video game being controlled by higher beings, and right. we're all just like in Super Mario Brothers. Yes, uh, I wish I had a good argument against that hypothesis, and I do not. So you think it's very... Really? You think it's... Let's consider the two hypotheses together. One, he's saying we're engaged in a global experiment on how people will react 
um, to having their lives shut down because of the coronavirus. And secondly, he's saying that there is no argument um, against the notion that we are essentially living in a simulation or a game. All right. So let's put the two together. We are essentially living in a simulation that is testing how will the populace react to having their lives shut down because of an invisible virus jumping from person to person. Now, that could be a purely scientific experiment. That could be a scientist sitting on the other side of this universe, essentially testing <laughs> how will we react in different parts of the world. And possibly they want to find out, okay, is a system like we have in China um, actually more efficient in dealing with threats like a virus? Or does a liberal democracy uh, in the West deal with it better? I know that there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, uh, that it was the Chinese, uh, that it was the Americans who gave it to the Chinese, that it was the Russians. Um, God knows, I mean, there's probably plenty out there that was aliens or whatever. Uh, the question is always, you know, who is benefiting from this? Right now, I don't see, at least on this planet, anybody benefiting from it. The Russians are not benefiting because the oil price is down. The Chinese aren't benefiting from it because their economy is in shambles. Uh, and the United States is their biggest trading partner. So <laughs> they're not benefiting uh, off you know, this economic turmoil. Um, the United States isn't benefiting either. I'm obviously, you know, they're in a, in a substantial crisis. So I'm not going with any of these conspiracy theories. I would like to put forward the hypothesis that we are, in fact, engaged in a giant simulation. And I've done a lot of research for a science fiction book uh, I'm in the process of writing right now. Uh, and I've actually predicted a virus uh, going loose. In my fiction, it was a virus uh, that um, came from a Neanderthal child that was thawed out um, in an ice field up in the Antarctic because of global warming. Uh, because let's not forget, uh, the next crisis is going to be global warming. And uh, that would be the next experiment uh, if we're going to be listening to the scientists and the experts on this, or are we just going to deny it and uh, have our own theories about it? Um, so what I've done as well, though, is I've been speaking to uh, some scientists and doing a lot of research into quantum physics uh, about the notion of this is essentially a simulation and reality isn't really real. And um, one of the people I was talking to was a, an astrophysicist, um, uh, a um, academic professor at the University of Baltimore, uh, who wrote an article about the mental universe and essentially suggested that photons and electrons don't exist either. I mean, we detect them, we've called them photons and electrons, uh, thinking of them as particles, but he said they don't actually exist as particles. We just gave him that name because we don't know how to deal with it otherwise. But essentially they're just excitations within the quantum field. And there's a probability distribution that it, you know, it happens to be here or there. Uh, but they're not essentially material. And then he said that the universe is essentially a phony. It isn't real. We perceive it as real, but it isn't real. It's a phony. Now, <laughs> that plays exactly into the same idea that we are actually engaged in either a giant game for entertainment of future generation, possibly, or just a you know scientific experiment uh, and a simulation that is being done in a lab somewhere. Um, the big question now is, if it's a game, who are the players? Uh, and if it's a simulation, you know, how will it end? And how, what does it even help us knowing that we are possibly engaged in a game or a simulation? Um, I will try and answer that question in my book. And uh, my book will be coming out in a month or two. Um, it's got the provisional title of The Reality Game. And um, if you're interested in hearing more about it, 
then uh, yeah, just please subscribe to this channel and uh, you will hear more of my crazy ideas. Bye for now. Well, this was actually the first part of Tom talking. And if you like what Tom thinks and what he has to say to us, just give us a thumbs up, click the subscribe button below in order to get regular updates and write me in the comments what exactly you think about what Tom has to say. And just write me if you like to have more videos about Tom talking and uh, yeah, I will ask him if uh, he would like to provide more videos because I think he has a lot to say and I think he's a highly educated and very well experienced man. So for me, this is very interesting. So thank you very much, Tom. Thumbs up and see you next time. Bye, peace and stay healthy. Oh, <laughs>